Today is Friday, the 7th of May, 2021, and we are live on NTN with another morning update. We apologize for the late start, but we move on expeditiously. My name is Jesse Leonce, and if you're just joining us on air online, a special good morning to you. If you're joining us uh, from uh, the diaspora, St. Lucians in the diaspora, good morning to you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Residents in St. Lucia as well, it is important that we know what's going here on here on island, particularly as we continue to fight on of COVID-19. Here now with the uh, latest developments from the government of St. Lucia. We have quite a few from the Ministry of Health and Wellness, an update from the Ministry of Finance that we didn't get to highlight earlier this week, and that is the release of a citizen's guide to the 2021-2022 budget and also the Republic of China-Taiwan uh, presenting equipment to the Plainview Combined School to facilitate the opening of a smart classroom. We have the details to these stories and more starting right now. Going to let you know where the uh, COVID-19 vaccinations are happening today. Uh, we have locations, Philip Marsley Grounds, uh, the Denry Mothers Preschool, also the Darren Sammy Cricket Grounds, the VG Sports Complex, the Sufer Hospital Grounds, Babano Multipurpose Center, and the Canaries Wellness Center as well as the Jack Mill Wellness Center. You are reminded that if you're going to get your second jab, please carry with you your vaccination card that was given to you when you got your first uh, jab of the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine uh, with you. If you're going for the first time, carry with you your identification card so that they can uh, catalog you in the system properly, but also pre-register hmi.govt.lc or if you don't have access to an online platform you can let uh, your nearest health center community wellness center know that you're interested in getting vaccinated against COVID-19 and they will pre-register on your behalf. We have some new cases of COVID-19 to report also recovery so five new cases of COVID-19 being reported by the Ministry of Health last evening. Uh, this was out of a batch of 161 samples, which were taken on May 3rd, 2021, and processed on the 5th. The five individuals were seen at the various respiratory clinics in communities where they were assessed and tested for COVID-19. You know the drill. They're being asked to remain in isolation until they come back, uh, their, their tests come back. And for those that came back positive, arrangements were made to place these new cases into isolation uh, until they were recovered. And contact tracing for these individuals is now underway. Confirmation was also received of the recovery of 12 individuals, bringing the total number of active cases in country to date sorry, active cases in country to 100. So to date, since March of last year, uh, we've had 4,607 cases of COVID-19 here on island. Just to let you know, all of the active cases right now that are being cared for, uh, they are all doing well. As of yesterday, well, as of May 5th, in terms of the vaccinations, we have 24,773 uh, first vaccinations, first doses being disseminated, given out, administered, and the second doses given as of May 5th is 8,621. So uh, please take note of those figures. It's steadily climbing. Individuals are indicating their interest to get vaccinated. Of course, this is based on the extensive sensitization that has happened on the part of the Ministry of Health and Wellness well before we got our first batch of our first shipment of vaccines here on island. The Ministry of Health has been working feverishly to ensure that the general public is aware of, of the vaccine, what it aims to do, uh, not only here in St. Lucia, but in response to the pandemic in the global space. So if you still have concerns with respect to taking the vaccine, you could always call the Ministry of Health and Wellness. Let them know that you have some reservations, you have some queries, uh, and you can let them know uh, so that they can assist you in making the decision to get inoculated. So I already mentioned the locations for vaccinations. Uh, we're moving on to a, a notice that we received from the Ministry of Health. It's a bulletin, mold remediation works at the Denry Hospital. So the Department of Health is informing the public of the temporary closure of the respiratory clinic at the Denry Hospital from today, that is Friday, May 7th to Monday the 10th uh, to facilitate mold remediation works. Uh, people with respiratory symptoms are asked to visit either the Leclerc Respiratory Clinic 
or the Viewfort Respiratory Clinic uh, during this time. And during this period, mold remediation works will continue at the urgent care unit of the hospital. Therefore, people who are requiring emergency care are asked to visit the St. Jude Hospital and the Owen King E Hospital during this set time. The pharmacy at the Denry Hospital will also be closed from Monday, 10th May to Sunday, May 16th. And during this time, people are asked to utilize the pharmacy at the Rich for Wellness Center. All services at the Denry Hospital will resume from Monday, 17th May 2021. If you want some more information, you can always contact uh, the Denry Hospital hospital at 468-7656 or 468-7650. We now turn our attention to uh, the parliamentary proceedings taking place yesterday, Thursday, 6th May uh, 2021. We had the sitting of the Senate, in which uh, followed uh, the sitting of the House of Assembly earlier this week. And among the matters uh, being forwarded in the Honorable House was the petition to extend the state of emergency uh, for an additional five months. As you are aware, the current state of emergency uh, will expire, is set to expire on the 16th of May. However, the government of St. Lucia uh, went to the Honorable House this week to petition an extension for an additional five months, taking us into 16th October 2021. And uh, we did hear from uh, the, uh, part, the lead in the Senate uh, for government, that is uh, Senator the Honorable Mary Isaac, also Minister for Health and Wellness, uh, reinforcing the rationale for the extension. Uh, take look at our first clip for the morning we are still getting about on average about 100 cases per week and that is still not satisfactory while it is better than where we were before it is still not satisfactory not satisfactory enough for us to loosen up on the protocols that we have that currently exist which includes a curfew madam president and I've heard a lot of talk about it's better now, therefore, why do we need the curfew? If you were on antibiotics, Madam President, for 10 days, and you start taking it and getting better, after the third day, you are much better. Madam President, do you stop? You have to continue because the end result is to get rid of whatever it is that is in your system, and you require the 10 days of taking the antibiotics to do so. COVID-19 is still with us, Madam President. It is because of the measures that we have put in place that we are seeing some sort of, I don't even want to call it relief, Madam President, because it's just that the numbers seem to be remaining stable, declining a little and remaining stable. So this is just a semblance of a relief that we are seeing. We cannot drop our guard or let it down because we can go back to a worse situation than where we were before. We know of Trinidad and Tobago right now, our brothers and sisters there are really suffering. They're under tremendous pressure. We have Martinique, closer to home. We hear of India and we see what is happening. With such a large population, we cannot afford that in St. Lucia, Madam President. We would all be wiped out in a matter of one week. So for those people who are questioning the need for that curfew, I want to remind them to look at the news, the international news, and they will be quickly reminded of what can happen if we do not continue this measure that we are asking, that we are taking to this Honorable House today for approval. Now, Senator the Honorable Isaac also addressed uh, some gaps in the system. She did acknowledge it after it was also highlighted by uh, the Senate opposition uh, within the healthcare system in terms of responding to uh, the COVID-19 crisis. Uh, take a look. And while I heard the critics and the skeptics talking about this is not working, contact tracing is not working, somebody has not been called, 24 hours, they tested and no results, and so on and so forth, Madam President. Nobody is saying that we are perfect. Nobody is saying we do not have gaps in the system. As a matter of fact, we work every day at the ministry to try and address some of those gaps. And we are addressing them as quickly and as much as possible. So we know that there are gaps. And I will not say that some of the, my fellow senators have not fallen into those gaps themselves. 
But I know that the ministry, the staff are working assiduously, Madam President, to guard the lives and livelihood of our citizens in St. Lucia. And for that, I am eternally grateful. That was Senator the Honorable Mary Isaac, also leader of government business in the Senate, responding and speaking on the rationale for the state of emergency extension and also addressing the gaps in the system. Uh, when we come back, uh, we also have her again speaking on the uh, election concerns, and all again highlighted by uh, the opposition in the upper house. So stay tuned for that. We also have uh, the uh, Minister for Home Security and... Um, National Security and Home Affairs, sorry, Senator the Honorable Herman Gil Francis. He did speak on the wardens, the status of the wardens program. So stay tuned for that and more coming up on the other end of this break. Parle en place publique, combat en main, base, petit boutique, changer, distance sociale, six pieds, rodion à l'autre. Il y a trois vaitons, si vous sentez que vous pas cordial, quarantine, vous partez en contact et puis l'autre, en cas où vous trois pieds exposés. C'est un écouillé. Free one one no be ne pot clinic yo pe yo. Le pe ya di mi a kle. Sa vle di le supermarket, pharmacy, e pi ATM. Yo accesam avan se tet swe. Pe ya kle an plen. Sa vle di tout bagay fe me a 24 we. Se vi protokol kom soti pa bi wo indikasyon sante. Nou tout ansam. Sa sove ve min korona si nou tout sevi djidla a tout le. Thank you so much for staying with us. This is the morning update live on NTN. We're coming to you from the Information Command Center. On a Tuesday, uh, the Prime Minister, Honorable Alan Chastney, in his rebuttal, that was Tuesday evening in the Honorable House, uh, during which a motion was tabled for the extension of the state of emergency, he did stress that the state of emergency here in St. Lucia does not impede processes for the national exercise, that is the general election. And that is because the state of emergency can always be revoked by the Governor General for any matters that are due under the Constitution. Uh, we did hear from the leader of government business in the Senate on Thursday, echoing the words of the Honorable Prime Minister in the Upper House. Uh, Senator the Honorable Mary Isaac did reiterate this position and she also addressed and she also de did re-emphasize uh, that the elections, uh, the state of emergency does not have any implications or negative implications for St. Lucians being able to exercise their franchise. Take a look. This curfew ends a few days after elections are constitutionally due. So what does it have to do with elections? You are opposition, we are in government. We both want to, want to, um, we both want to go out and, and, you know, prepare for our elections and everything else. There's nothing that the opposition is going to do that we ourselves do not want to do. So what is it that we are depriving the opposition of that we are not depriving ourselves of? Elections, campaign, we can... Madam President, it's Bob Marley who said, he who fights and run away lives to fight another day. Let us make the sacrifice now, Madam President, so that we can be here next year. We can be here in five years' time to have another election. That was Senator the Honorable Mary Isaac there speaking 
on and reinforcing the point that the state of emergency does not impede the processes for a general election. As you know, the Governor General can always revoke for uh, that national exercise. And the Prime Minister also did indicate that what is most important to him and the government at this time is that the general elections are held in a safe manner and he did commit to working with the opposition to ensure that both of uh, parties in the main are able to agree, come to an agreement on how the COVID-19 protocols will Will be observed on during that process. Uh, we continue with a word from uh, the Minister for uh, National Security and Home Affairs, uh, Senator the Honorable Herman Gil Francis, who did uh, confirm uh, that he uh, did have uh, the COVID-19 virus and that he is recovered. So he did return to the Honorable House to make his contribution uh, for that sitting. And he did more specifically speak on the status of the warden's program. Uh, we did get word that it would be stopped. Uh, however, he did assure the general public, assure the parliament, that while that is the case, while it has been shelved for now, there are efforts right now to try to incorporate these same individuals who are doing a good work into the various uh, other institutions to continue uh, their work and continue being of service to the nation. However, the, the, he did not want to, the ministry, the government of St. Lucia did not want to continue having these individuals on board way past the program time frame and not be able to have funds allocated for their salaries. Take a listen. This project was a, a seven months project and um, because it was so successful that we had to be getting funds to, to, to be able to do that. Um, President, it has come to an end. But the government is actively looking for the, the, the finances uh, in, in ways of like savings because there are positions that where the police has to Im, um, employ more police officers, more fire officers and so on. But we have recognized the importance of the COVID wardens and so we are making the relevant allocations available so that they can be paid. We don't want to have persons employed and two, three months down the line you're not paying them. We want to make sure that we pay them every month um, like any other civil servant. So this is the reason why the project has been shelved for a little while, but we intend to continue. Thank you. That was a Senator. Uh, the Honorable Herman de Gil Francis there. We continue with our updates this morning. Uh, by the end of the month uh, from since the, uh, the budget uh, was released, we have the Department of Finance indicating that they developed a citizen's guide to the 2021-2022 budget. Take a look at this report. The Department of Finance is mandated to provide oversight and management of the preparation of the annual estimates of revenue and expenditure, also known as the National Budget. Permanent Secretary in the Department of Finance, Esther Rigobert, said the department has seen the need for greater public awareness and education on how the department delivers on its mandate. It's the responsibility of government agencies to communicate with the wider public their work program, what they're doing, the initiatives being undertaken, and how that would be of benefit to them. P.S. Rigobert made those remarks in reference to the publication of a Citizen's Guide to the 2021-2022 budget produced by the Department of Finance. She said the guide has simplified the somewhat intimidating over 600-page budget document filled with numbers, figures, and estimates. We found it very useful to um, develop and publish a document that's very easy to read and understand so that the average person, whether it be a student, educator, a nurse, doctor, police officer, a farmer, fisherman, regardless, can go through this document within a short period of time and get an appreciation of what's contained in the government's estimates of revenue and expenditure. The Citizen's Guide, she explained, provides an outline of the budget process, the agencies involved in its preparation, the legal authority, links to supporting documents such as the Governor General and Prime Minister's policy statements, among other pertinent information. It will delineate the expenditures by ministry or department. It would show what the total expenditure is expected to be for this fiscal year and also where the revenues would be derived from, both from tax revenue and grants and other um, loan facilities, as well as bonds and treasury bills. So that is a form of educating the public. And the average solution needs to get a better appreciation of what government's revenues and expenditures um, comprise of. And we hope that this guide would do just that. 
the Citizen's Guide to the Budget, has been published on the Government of St. Lucia's web portal, the Department of Finance's website, as well as on the social media pages of the Government of St. Lucia and the NCPC. For the National Competitiveness and Productivity Council, Glenn Simon reporting. Wonderful, Glenn Simon. Thank you so much for that report. Uh, do stay tuned when we come back, our final segment of the morning. Nobody can tell me what I know Could I even go to Tokyo? No place like Lucia, no, no, no Then Lucia, my little chakra, let's go Number one, number one, one million stone Even when your own people, them hit you I and I will never forsake you Sons and only daughters The island now St. Lucia The place that you look culture Thank you so much for staying with us. We're now down to our final segment of the morning update live on NTN. The Republic of China, Taiwan this week, uh, well last week, sorry, presented equipment to the Plainview Combined School to facilitate the opening of a new smart classroom. We have a report. Permanent Secretary in the Department of Education, Innovation and Gender Relations, Michelle Charles, noted that the Department of Education remains committed to providing students with real-world skills, enabling them to become self-sufficient. The opening of the classroom, she explained, sets the foundation for the development of technological competencies required to succeed in the global environment. To the students of the Plainview, Plainview Combined School, Today's gift is an investment in them. You are the future and we wish to ensure that you possess the requisite skills necessary to navigate this very dynamic digital space. We believe in the ability of your teachers to integrate the use of technology into your everyday instruction and we trust that you will be receptive and excited to learn through varying approaches. The equipment provided includes Chromebook laptops, projectors, and an educational interactive television. This will aid in ensuring that students have access to IT equipment and are ready for the online learning environment. Taiwanese Ambassador, His Excellency Peter Chen. The reopening of school does not underscore the imperativeness of incorporating ICT into the education system for the future. Yeah, at the time that uh, we hear about coding, robotics, drums, e-business, artificial intelligence, Internet of Things, big data, open uh, courses on a daily basis. Today's event makes sure that we are smart and strategically in, in providing the resources that are necessary in teaching and learning in the future. Principal of the Plainview Combined School, Ella Thomas John, says the classroom and the equipment received will be put to good use. Presently, distributed learning is the desired approach for teaching. Therefore, our attention should focus on how well we can use the ICTs and how best to develop, utilize, and leverage students' brain power. Through its use, we promise that as the phenomenal school that we have proven and continue to be, and as our motto enunciates, we will pray for knowledge, pray for wisdom, and determine to sail through our future conquest in this smart classroom. We also thank you for the additional component of teacher training, acknowledging that planning to teach virtually is different from planning to teach in a physical classroom. Teacher Teacher training is paramount. The Plainview Combined School is the only Southern primary school included in the Smart Classroom program. For the Government Information Service, I am Jesse Leons. Well, we've come to the end of our morning update. I'd like to thank you so much for tuning in this morning, making us your morning station. Do keep safe this weekend until we meet again on Monday, God willing. I just want to remind you of the locations where the health teams will be administering the COVID-19 vaccine, Philip Marslake Grounds, the Denry Mothers Preschool, the Darren Sammy Cricket Grounds, the VG Sports Complex, Sufra Hospital Grounds, the Babano Multipurpose Center, Canaries Wellness Center, and the Jackmel Wellness Center. Thank Thank you.
you so much for watching. Do keep safe. My name is Jessie Leon signing off for now. Continue to stay tuned to NTN for more programming. Goodbye.